All right, in this low budget video, we're going to look at FM programming in the K2700. Specifically, we're going to look at envelopes. Uh, so let's take a look at a string sound here and see if we can uh, get a better understanding of what's happening with these envelopes. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit on this string sound, and I'm going to go to our FM main page. Now, the trick with envelopes is, um, in, in an analog synthesizer, you have two basic types of envelope that are pretty common. You have your amplifier envelope, and that's going to control the rate at which the volume uh, reaches its maximum. And then if there's any type of decay and release, um, that's going to be affected as well. Um, on an analog synthesizer, you also typically have a filter envelope, which is going to control the filter, how much it opens and closes, what the rate of that is, what's its peak, and so forth. There is no filter on an FM synthesizer, but you can kind of fake that by applying an envelope to the modulator operator. So if you remember from a previous uh, video, you have two different types of operators. You have a carrier and a modulator. Uh, easy way to think about this is those carriers which in this particular diagram is one and three. Remember, anything on the bottom is going to be your carrier. That's what you're hearing. Um, that is going to be a, uh, when you apply the envelope, that is going to affect the amplifier. Uh, two, four, five, and six in this particular algorithm, those are all modulators. So when you apply an envelope to those, it's going to affect the rate and level of change to the corresponding, um, corresponding, operators below um, so they don't have, you know technically it's not a filter but it sort of sounds that way so let's just see what's going on here I'm going to take a look at just one and two so if you remember we can press multi and I'm going to go ahead and turn off three so that'll turn off that whole stack so now all I'm hearing is one and two okay perfect I'm even going to do I'm going to go one better I'm going to go back I'm going to turn off two so now all we're hearing is one. We should just hear a sine wave now. Okay, perfect. Now let's go down to the envelope settings. So you have a rate, a level, rate, level, rate, level, rate, level. These basically correspond to attack, decay, sustain, and release, which you are probably familiar with on an analog synthesizer. So the R1, that is going to be your attack setting. How long does it take to reach the maximum? So you can see here, 99, which I always think of as zero. It, it feels backwards to me on FM synthesizer, but anyway, 99 is basically going to be the quickest. So if we press uh, down on keys, it's going to be sort of an instant sound. Okay, if we want to have it come in more gradually, like a string, even more. Perfect. So it's behaving like an amplifier envelope. We also have our decay here which is going to be R2. So you can see how long do I want that decay to last? Let's say I only want it to last a little bit. And then I want to have the level drop there. See that? And then we have our sustain. How long do we want that to sustain for? Let's not have it play for quite so long. And then we have our release oops, release here. So when I let go of the keys, how long does it continue to play for? See, I'm not holding, not holding. I don't really like that so much. So I'm gonna go back and go. So it's a very soft opening, soft closing. Now I'm gonna go back to our, I'm gonna bring this closer. There we go, not quite so much. There's a reason I'm doing this. Now I want to take a look at applying the envelope to operator one, uh, the, the modulator for operator one, which is two. Let's go back to multi, make sure two is turned on so we can hear the effect. Okay, so you can hear that. So let's do this. Let's make two a bit more gradual than one so we can actually hear it. So you can see here two actually reaches its peak before the amp envelope, so you're never really hearing it come in. So let's do this. Let's make this a bit more. See? See what just happened? If I do 64, which is so I'm going to match the two levels, it doesn't really, it, it, you really can't hear any change 
to, uh, to 1. So there's really no modulation change going on, it's just constant. If I want it to be more like a filter envelope, I'm going to go ahead and make it last a little bit longer. Okay, that's a little too much. So here it takes... Perfect. Now, what is this level? So you can see there's a level here. Let's say I don't want to have it affect it quite so much at first. Well, that's boring. Let's turn it up. So one thing I've noticed about uh, FM is there's sort of this non-linear curve when you start changing numbers. So 99 has a great effect, but you go down below 90, all of a sudden you really can't hear much. That happens a lot, surprises me. So anyway, we have, let's make this even quicker. See that? Now we've got this blip thing going on. And let's bring this part of the envelope down here. Okay, so it, you can hear there's a little bit of, now sort of almost horn-like attack. Now let's go add the rest of this um, algorithm back in its place. So I'm going to put three there, and let's see what happens when we combine those two. Well, I can't really hear what's going on, and I suspect that's because three is coming in before one. So let's do this. Let's get rid of one. Now I'm going to make the envelope on three take a little bit longer longer than that, just for exaggeration's sake. So now, too much, so now if I add back in R1, you should hear blip and then that string-like sound after. And now let's play with this a bit. can sort of hear that blip better. Now here's some high harmonics which, well let's bring those up a little bit more. That's six, I can tell right away that that's gonna add a big difference because it was already at eight. So, I'm going to go over to the FM layer page, and I'm going to turn down that feedback. Let's turn it down to nothing. Yeah, it's not really making a difference. Still learning here, folks. So, as you can see, with FM synthesis, you have so many different envelopes you're working with. You can really get a lot of different types of... Uh, sort of motion going on at the same time, just in one simple patch. Now, in order to hear one a little bit more, let's turn it up, because I want that to be more prominent. Eh. What else can we do? Let's change the frequency, so it's, it's a bit too much. <laughs> and let's bring this guy down. Okay, what else can we look at here? So there is uh, one type of envelope and it can be used to affect two different things. There's also a pitch envelope on the DX engine, and that can be found on the FM layer page. So I'm going to click on FM layer, and you can see pitch EG, that stands for pitch envelope generator, and um, this is going to affect all of the, uh, all of, I believe, the um, carriers. I don't think pitch has anything to do with the modulators, but again, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. But we can actually 
rise or lower the pitch of a sound, or rise then lower, depending on um, what we set this to. So let's let's do this. I'm going to raise our first uh, setting here. This is our level one. All right. So it does a quick rise and then drops right back down to where we were. Let's change the rate of this and let's have it take longer. You can notice that the um, that sort of operator one stack we can hear is actually happening before the uh, the pitch EG. So it's really not even catching that, which is nice. So you have a lot of things going on here. You've got the attack, and then you've got the change in pitch. Let's say I don't want that abrupt drop. Let's bring this out and see what happens. All right, sounds like a video game. If I turn this up. So now it's going to rise, stay in the same place for a while, and then come back down. So when I let go, it comes down. Let's do this. I want it to take longer after we let go to come back down to normal. This is really going to sound like an effect. And now I'm going to let go. So you can hear that, so it just drops off. That's kind of cool, right? So it doesn't... Let's do this. Let's bring everything else back down to where it was at the beginning. It's going to be fun. I promise. Going so fast. Can't keep up with myself. All right. Down to 50, down to 50. And I'll bring this guy... Down to 50, and then, oh my, what's happening here? in there. Let's say I decide I don't really like that blip anymore. I'm going to go back to our FM main page. And I'm going to find our envelope for our second operator. And let's spread that out a bit just to exaggerate it. I want to even make that more gradual. And we'll bring this down, this over, and even more. And just for fun, let's bring up this so we can get some of that really high harmonic stuff happening. So you get the idea here. Um, I think that the idea um, of all these different envelopes um, affecting your different modulators and your different carriers is, uh, it's a lot to take in. So I would say start looking at some sounds uh, and trying to figure out what they're doing with those sounds. Um, I've noticed, you know, a lot of the sound effect uh, patches rely on the envelope, uh, sort of the pitch envelope generator quite a bit. Uh, I don't find it to be the most musical thing. It's kind of hard. Uh, but um, I think it's a good idea to listen to different sounds like mallets and your horns and strings and um, other uh, sort of synth things that are going on. And look at the envelopes and fig try and figure out what they're doing. And the easiest way to do that, like I said, is click on your mult and start muting things. Start muting those, uh, those carriers on the bottom. And then start taking a look one stack at a time what's happening. So... 
go ahead and enjoy. Hopefully you learned something here and you can sort of feel less timid or apprehensive about going and trying your own programming. So enjoy.